So ladies and gentlemen, over the next 10 minutes, I'm going to show you how we can potentially use flaxseed. You can see that. <laughs> there we go. So for the next 10 minutes, I'm going to show you how we can potentially use flaxseed to protect the heart from the damaging effects of two common anti-cancer drugs, doxorubicin and trastuzumab, which are used to treat women with breast cancer. So I'll say that I have no disclosures. Cancer and heart disease are the two leading causes of death worldwide, and they are intricately linked, coincidentally being the two leading causes of death in Canada. So, the field of cardio-oncology has been evolving to focus on the prevention, diagnosis, and management of cancer patients who are at risk of developing cardiovascular complications. This illustrates the critical need for basic scientists, oncologists, and cardiologists to work together to prevent, treat, and manage patients who are at risk of developing chemotherapy-induced cardiotoxicity. So if I can just get all the ladies in the audience to raise your hand right now, I will do the same. Uh, I will also ask people who have a mother, sister, daughter, aunt, or grandmother to also raise their hand. So that's uh, pretty about everyone in the audience. So what I want people to take away is that one in every eight of these women will diagnose breast cancer in their lifetime. If you look at every hour, that's three new diagnoses, which shows you just how significant breast cancer is in, your, in our country. Typically what happens is a woman will discover a lump in her breast, so she will go to her family physician, and after a series of tests, this lump is determined to be cancerous. So she started on a treatment plan where she'll undergo a mastectomy, receive radiation therapy, with the next step to be started on chemotherapy with the use of targeted agents. So in my study, we're specifically looking at two common anti-cancer therapies. One is doxorubicin, which is an anthracycline that functions by disrupting DNA replication, resulting in decreased cellular proliferation. The second is trastuzumab, which is a monoclonal antibody that's targeted against the human epidermal growth factor receptor 2, also known as the HER2 gene, which is overexpressed in HER2-positive cancers. TRAS functions by binding to dimerize HER2 receptors, which inactivates them and prevents the signal cascade, leading to a decrease in cellular proliferation, angiogenesis, and reducing overall tumor growth. Landmark clinical trials have demonstrated that DOCS and TRAS decrease breast cancer reoccurrence and progression by one-third. Unfortunately, this is viewed as a double-edged sword as the use of these anti-cancer medications also increases the risk of cardiotoxicity, so much so that 25% of women who receive this treatment may go on to develop heart failure. So you've essentially traded one disease for the other. So in order to address this issue, several cardioprotective agents like beta blockers, ACE inhibitors, and antioxidants have already been studied in landmark trials such as Prada, Manticore, and Overcome, and they were shown to be cardioprotective. But the question lies is why do we have to give these women another medication to prevent this damage from occurring? Can we potentially protect their heart with something natural, like a nutraceutical, like flaxseed, that's grown locally here in Manitoba and already incorporated into the diets of 30% of women with breast cancer? Alpha linolenic acid, ALA, and the lignin SDG are two of the main bioactive components found in flax. They respectively have anti-inflammatory properties and inhibit the production of reactive oxygen species. So they will be the potential cardioprotective agents that we are investigating in this study. So here is a cartoon schematic of what happens to a woman when they receive doxin tras treatment for their breast cancer. As you can see, the combination of these two drugs affects the inflammatory and oxidative stress pathways and that they upregulate them, which can lead to apoptosis, fibrosis, and ultimately the heart failure that we are diagnosing in this patient population. So we propose that flax and its bioactive components will be able to attenuate these pathways. Specifically, ALA will inhibit the inflammatory pathway and the lignin, SDG, will inhibit the oxidative stress pathway with an end result of preventing the cardiac damage that we're observing in these women. So with that being said, our objective for this study is to investigate whether the prophylactic administration of flax and or its bioactive components, ALA and SDG, 
are cardioprotective against docs and TRAS mediated cardiotoxicity in a chronic in vivo marine model. Looking at our methodology, we've already incorporated 104 female mice into our study, and they were randomized into our four dietary groups of regular chow, flax, ALA, or SDG. And they were fed these diets for three weeks as a run-in period prior to the administration of our various treatment groups, which included saline as a control, DOCS only, TRAS only, or the combination of DOCS and TRAS. So this is a six-week study, and we divided each trial into two phases. In our first phase, we have the prophylactic period, where we administer the FLAX, ALA, and SDG diets on a daily basis throughout the entire duration of the study. At week four, we transition into the treatment period, where we administer three weekly injections of our various treatment groups, including the DOCS and TRAS, to simulate what is done in the clinical setting. During this time, we also continue to feed the mice their various FLAX, ALA, and SDG diets. We monitor cardiovascular remodeling using serial marine echocardiography on a weekly basis. We performed a hemodynamic assessment at baseline, the end of week three and end of week six. And then once mice were sacrificed, we collected cardiac tissue for histological and biochemical analysis. So getting to, into our results, I'll first talk about uh, the cardiovascular remodeling that we monitored using the left ventricular ejection fraction. So that's the heart's ability to pump blood to the rest of your body. So every time it squeezes, how much blood it expels, that would be your calculated ejection fraction. So you can see in the purple bar, which is our control, it's about 75% for both treatment groups, which is standard for a mouse. But then when we ad administered the DOCS by itself or the combination of DOCS and TRAS in the red bars here, you can see that the ejection fraction dropped to 52 and 45% respectively. However, with the addition of FLAX, ALA, or SDG, shown in the green, yellow, and blue bars, you can see that we actually partially preserve the ejection fraction of these mice, indicating that there is a degree of cardioprotection from these agents. But in order to uh, assure that these cardioprotective agents are the cause of this, we had to make sure that the mice were absorbing these nutrients from their diets. So we ran two experiments in order to confirm this. In our first experiment, we measured the plasma content of ALA using gas chromatography and flame ionization detection. And uh, in the panel A here, we see the total fatty acid profile that's found in the mouse plasma, and the peak denoted by the red arrow represents ALA. So we quantified the area under the curve here and showed those results in panel B. And as you can see, there are just trace amounts of ALA in the regular chow and SDG groups, but then we see this dramatic increase in the ALA group at 2.8% and 1.9% in the FLAX group. As ALA is, is an omega-3 fatty acid that's only found within the body when, when it's been ingested, we know that the mice were absorbing the ALA nutrient from their assigned diets. Similarly, in our second experiment, we measured the plasma content of SDG metabolites using quadruple time of flight. And we detected SDG metabolites in the flax and SDG groups only. So again, as SDG and its metabolites are not endogenous substances, we know that the mice were absorbing them through their assigned diets. Now we also wanted to confirm that flax was not exhibiting any antihypertensive properties that could be contributing to the overall cardioprotective effect. So we performed the hemodynamic assessment on the mice at baseline, which is in red, and endpoint in blue, and we saw that there were no significant changes in mean arterial pressure, meaning that the antihypertensive properties were not a factor. Now I've already shown you this schematic of how doxin tras uh, lead to cardiotoxicity in women with breast cancer. But I want to draw your attention to PPAR alpha, which has been shown by Ravindrarova and others to be upregulated by the oxidative stress pathway during this treatment. Well, we analyzed the expression levels of a surrogate marker of PPAR alpha that's found in the plasma and derived from arachidonic acid. And what we saw was that this derivative was upregulated in the regular chow plus dox and regular chow plus dox and tras treated groups, which is what we expected based off of the Ravindrarova findings. However, with the addition of flax, ALA, or SCG to the diets, we're actually able to shut off the expression of this derivative, indicating that the oxidative stress pathway is being inhibited by these bioactive components. 
Now, whether this derivative also affects the degree of apoptosis and fibrosis will require further study. So with re respect to our results, we have four take-home messages. One is that FLAX, ALA, and SDG prevented adverse cardiovascular remodeling. Two, we were able to detect ALA and SDG in the plasma, confirming nutrient absorption. Three, we did not see any antihypertensive effects of FLAX or its components. And four, we observed the downregulation of a PPAR alpha derivative in, from the oxidative stress pathway in the FLAX, ALA, and SDG groups. So these are really exciting results for us, and once we've established a proof of concept and confirmed the mechanisms of how FLAX, ALA, and SDG are cardioprotective, our next step will be to translate these findings into the clinical arena where we will be administering FLAX milk, which contains 30 grams of FLAX per serving, to women with breast cancer at the onset of their diagnosis to prevent cardiotoxicity from occurring. This is called the phantom study, so please stay tuned for our future results. I'll just take a moment to thank my supervisors, Dr. Jassel, Dr. Single, and Dr. Narula, as well as our lab technician, Mr. David Chung, and the rest of the cardiovascular imaging laboratory at the Albertson Research Center. Thank you all for your time, and I'll be happy to take any questions.